Welcome back to the IDP Pros Podcast. My name is Johnny the Greek. I am joined this week with my main man from Ohio, the IDP uh, tipster, the legend himself, Mr. Gary Van Dyke. Gary, how we doing? Um, just enjoying the football, man. I mean, we've had some really good games. I, I love it that the Lions have made it this far, man. I mean, uh, I know Nate's stoked, right? IDP, <laughs> IDP guy, main man, Nate. Yeah, yeah, buddy of yours. He's stoked, man. Yeah, I just love what Dan Campbell's done up there. Can't kind of excited yeah. for him. I, yeah. I, I think they. I, I said it yesterday, though. I think they might be hitting a wall this week. Mm, I, I hope. I, I think you're right. At all week, I've been. My thinking's changed a little bit. I think San Fran's going to kill him. I hope not. I, I, I want yeah. the Lions to go, but I'm with you, man. Right. Yeah. Yep, good games last week too. And uh, this week we've got the AFC and NFC title game that we're going to be talking about team lines, totals, money line. Gary's got some IDP bets for us. Uh, but before we get started, just a quick reminder these are only suggestions. Please gamble within your means and set a limit for help with problem gambling. Call 1 800 Gambler. And the IDP Pros podcast and IDP guys in general is brought to you by Trophy Smack. Use the promo code IDP guys, all one word, for a free ring with your purchase of a trophy or belt. All righty, Gary, what do we got this week, man? We'll, we'll start with uh, Chiefs and Ravens. So, uh, with fewer games, we wanted to talk about, you know, more stuff within right. these games, cover different options. Whereas, you know, the last few weeks, we've just been talking basically spread uh, and totals right. and whatnot. A uh, little bit different this week, though. So for this first game, Chiefs uh, at Ravens, uh, I told you this a couple days ago, and I have not changed my mind. I'm taking mm. the Chiefs plus four at minus 110. That price was actually better a couple days ago at plus 100, but that's still really good right there. That That is not yeah. a, lo a lot of juice, as we would say. And anytime Patrick Mahomes is getting points, in a, you know, especially in an AFC title game like this, I, I think you got to go with that. Lamar's great. The Ravens are great. They've had a spectacular season. The Chiefs have been there before. They know what they're doing. They are uh, led by probably the best quarterback in the NFL at this current moment in time. So if you're, if you're giving me four points, I'm taking them. Oh, yeah. I, I like it, man. Uh, I'm t it's it's tough for me on this one. I just know that I suspect it's going to be a pretty – pretty decent scoring game between the two of them. Um, I know there's going to be a little weather situation, possible rain or something, man, but uh, I, you know, I got a feel, I got a feeling gut call on the next one. That's probably, I think me and you might have just talked about, but uh, man, with this one, I have no clue where to go on it. And I, I called the chiefs last week. Yeah. We kind of was, I threw that in towards the end. I'm like, if I really got to look at it, I got to bet on Mahomes and uh, Kelsey. So, you know, I went ahead and said, throw that darted uh, Chiefs because I even said, don't even listen to me. You might not want to listen to me. Listen to John. Remember that? Anyhow. <laughs> no, Gary yeah. was right. I was I was wrong. Gary was right. <laughs> oh, was that one? You, oh, yeah. My <laughs> yeah, bad. Was, I didn't mean to point yeah. that shit out. No, brother. no, no. Ah. No, it, it's true. It's oh, true. Yeah. It, it, and you bring up a good point. As we get further into this stuff, we have fewer and fewer games to uh, – pick from so identifying value gets harder and harder right when, when right. you've got like like a 16 game slate or even like a wild card weekend when you got you know a whole bunch of games you can find the places where maybe vegas hasn't thought things through completely right. and and to, especially on the idp props and the player props you can really find that stuff with only two games this week it kind of is what it is so my overall advice would be if it doesn't feel right just skip it don't do it right Bet, right. bet the Super Bowl instead. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, you want to switch over to the total there, man? We'll yeah, sure, sure. Yep, yes, sir. We'll go right across the board here. So uh, for, for for spread, I want the uh, Chiefs at plus four. For total, uh, Gary raised a good point. We could have some weather issues. It's definitely going to be cold, might be rainy. Uh, and these are two of the, the better defenses in the league. Uh, the Ravens were the number one overall defense for the majority of the season. Uh, so I think the under 44 uh Excuse, yeah, the under 44.5 would probably be uh, where I would go with this. If it's me, though, if I'm making like one single bet on this game, I'm taking the Chiefs at plus four. 
Uh, I don't know how the total is going to go. Uh, I would suspect it's under 44 and a half just based on the quality of the defenses and, you know, the weather conditions and whatnot and the likely game script. But, uh, I, you know, I, I can't say for sure. That's a total shot in the dark. Uh, what do you think? I'd have to lean that when you, like you said, when you average in what the, uh, or figure in what the weather is possibly going to be like, you know, and the idea of how much Baltimore is just going to try to bully and control the ball. Uh, Chiefs. Yeah. I would have to go with the under. I mean, I, I can't see them all hitting their max because these are two decent uh, defenses as well. So um, I, I think that uh, each is, each is going to be able to uh, uh, get some, uh, three and outs on the other one. So yeah, yeah, I have no problem with the 44 and a half. Are we hitting the money line? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it would be, uh, I would take chiefs uh, money line as it, you know, as well. Is that, there. Okay. Yeah. That, that's what you tagged on there. Sure. Yeah. Cool, yeah. Cool. So, so that's, that, that's that just plus uh, 64, 164 too. I mean, that's the money maker bet right there. Right. R right. Right. And that's what they're doing is they're tempting you with the price to, uh, you know, try and take money line here. I, I just think if we can get those four points with the spread, that's much safer. That that means if it's a, you know, right down to the wire field goal game, we're covered betting the chiefs, right. the chiefs could still lose and, and we'd be okay. Uh, and, sure. and that, po that point you made on um, just the kind of style of offenses, these two teams have and their total points from the year average week to week. When we look at their average, it's like 28 and 21 points round about uh, Ravens, 28, Chiefs 21. So that would be over the 44 and a half, but you're right. We got to look at the quality of the defense. We got to look at what the recent game scripts have been. And if you look at the last three games for these teams combined last game, the Ravens played, they rushed for over 200 yards last two games. The chiefs have played. They've had over 29 rushing attempts each game, or, or excuse me, averaging 29 rushing attempts per game. Uh, and 146 yards plus in those two games. That's that's a slower pace of football, right? That's not as many right. three and outs. That's not your big, uh, you know, big one shot scoring drive type deals. That's a much slower eat up the clock, dominate time of possession style of football. And I think that helps us get to the under. No, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, we want to parlay off of that, man, about the whole how DraftKings has got this set up right now with their lines for the inside linebackers of Baltimore. All right, let me get to my notes here real quick because uh, this is a little bit weird. I, I kept staring at him yesterday when we were looking at uh, doing it the first edition, especially with Patrick Queen being a plus at seven and a half. Um, let's see. My problem is I can't say that I for sure would bet on either uh, of the Ravens and some linebackers lines right now. I would actually probably overall avoid this because I'm going to take a hard left at the end of this for Roquan Smith. But uh, Kansas City has been a bottom third team the entire season uh, in allowing any production to the, uh, to the inside linebackers. Now, I know we're probably looking at a little bit more of a running game, but you're also looking at a Baltimore defense with Patrick Queen, Kyle Hamilton's back. Uh, uh, everybody, they're getting a couple of guys. Uh, Humphreys is back in, in, in the secondary too. Uh, Marcus Williams is healthy and playing well. And I believe Gino Stone is probably still hanging out. They have plenty to go around the, the line to me there. You got, you know, Matabuki, which is tearing it up on the inside, which he, he, he's about their best defensive lineman, uh, in, in current production, the edge rushers, they eat. They rotate so much, man. They're more on par, guys. They're kind of hit and miss, but there's still plenty of production to go around. But you got a lot of studs mixed in there getting this production. Um, and in the same case, last week when Tyler Dodson and AJ Klein were the two inside linebackers for Buffalo, Klein got five. He's basically a run stopper, kind of the Roquan Smith kind of role, maybe not quite the pass rusher. Uh, pressure guy that he is but then uh tyler dotson only had eight combined so that's only 11 right there so it's kind of like a catch 22 when you're looking at 7.5 uh for patrick queen but at the same time you're thinking eight and a half for, uh for roquan smith on these lines i'm gonna actually suggest that considering the fact that uh, roquan smith only averaged like seven and a half tackles the last six games of the season and only had seven last week 
because of this fact, having Patrick Queen and even when Kelly Hamilton was banged up there and out, they've got suitable uh, suitable guys to fill in uh, in that secondary that's helped out. So uh, I, I would probably take the under on 8.5 for Smith. Yep. What would you? Uh, oh, I'm with you. I you am think? a I am a thousand percent with you. If you look at these lines right here. They've got Roquan and Patrick Queen combined are going to have over 17 combined tackles is what they're inferring here. Right. E even if we get 29 rushing attempts, <clears throat> which is, you know, we have gotten from the Chiefs the last two weeks, that's on the high end of things. The Chiefs throughout the regular season were a middle of the pack rushing attack with not 29 attempts per game. If we got like 25, we we're looking good, right? Pacheco has right. just awakened recently playoffs last four games of the season that's when they really featured him and really leaned into him so i i just don't think you know even if we get a perfect setup 29 plus rushing attempts uh you know 17 of those tackles are going to go to queen and smith plus matabuike plus marcus williams plus kyle hamilton mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I just don't see yeah, it. I don't, I, all of them. Right. There's, there's not enough to eat. There's not enough to go around queen or Smith. One of the two is going to be under, I can pretty much guarantee it. And if you've got uh, plus money for Roquan to be under, that's the move, man. That's the bet. Uh, it, I mean, looking at Patrick queen, if you wanted to force it there, I, I suppose you would actually, in my opinion, also have to go with the seven point five if you're splitting the hairs at plus 100 and the only reason i'm saying that is because he's the he's he's more of the coverage guy so we're looking at production is probably going to happen in the secondary with kels and, and kc even if they're running the ball they're going to get into the second part of the field so i would lean towards patrick queen being the guy that would get his 7.5 or have the better odds overtaking the negative 140 at 8.5 of course for roquan smith so but that's definitely not a bet i'm looking to make but i just know that some might be like kind of kind of pushing that you know i mean i can see it but i just don't see the production being there so i think the safe bet is the the uh plus 110 at eight and a half that's yeah the, cool, man. Right. i thought maybe you might think that oh yeah yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know like, I, I don't know what it is with us as Americans and football fans, but we're, we're like genetically programmed to love the overs and hate the unders. Mm -hmm. and, and the under is statistically far more likely to happen. Injuries, mm -hmm. blowouts, early rest, uh, game script doesn't go your way, whatever. There's a million ways the under do, uh, happens, and there's not nearly as many ways the over happens. Uh, so, right. uh, you know, it's it's a good bet to start with. Yeah, and, and you you nailed that. You nailed that. I mean, I I lean to plus bets so much. I mean, this is only like the second or third of been doing, you know, out loud. So, uh, probably the second third of the season. That's it. Well, yeah, I, I don't, I and I'm guilt. I'm guilty of it too. I I don't mm -hmm. do nearly as many unders as I should, but uh, statistically, they're more likely to happen. Yep. Right. Cool. We'll roll on, man. All right, let's have a look at the second game here. And my heart is hoping that the Lions win, but my brain is saying that it's probably going to be a Niners bloodbath victory because uh, Debo's been limited the last couple of days. That means he's on track to play. Uh, it was disgusting and rainy and not normal California weather last week. It's going to be 75 and sunny this week. Uh, the Niners played one of their worst games of the year last week, still won. Uh, they have not been clicking on all cylinders yet. If that happens this week, Sayonara Lions. Uh, I, I love them, and I hope they make it. I'm just not seeing it. Uh, so I would take, if I just had to take one of these bets, I would take Niners minus 7.5 at plus 100. Mm -hmm. But what, what I sent to Gary in our chat and, and said I would do in real life is move that down by a point. Uh, you can make an alt line out of that and make it minus six and a half so that if the Niners win by exactly a touchdown, uh, you're OK. You don't get screwed well, where whereas you would right here with that. Yeah. Nice. Well, as Sebastian brought it up last night, I guess they got a starting guard that's out and their center is pretty banged up. You know, he's an Iron Man. And he's probably going to play. He is. He is banged up. Um, uh, Alonzo will. Yeah. Alex Alonzo, I believe he's a little banged up too. So, uh, I mean, this 
team. I, I got to give kudos and love the Lions for what they've done, but a rested, well-rested 49ers defense and, and plenty of times for 49ers to kind of scheme and have this tape and figure this out. Man, yeah, yeah I got to roll with you, man. 49ers, I, th- I think you're good by a touchdown. Yeah, right, right. It is you know, a touchdown is doable. If you want to get crazy with it, you can really open that line up. If you think it's going to be a total bloodbath, make it like minus 13 and a half or something. But I think I think we're nice and safe there. Just turning it down one point to minus six and a half. That's still a good payout, too. So that's where I'd go with that one uh, for the over under. I also said under on this one, just following the train of thought that if the Niners do what on paper they should do and what I'm, I'm thinking they will do, um, they'll dominate time of possession. They'll win by double digits. The Lions won't produce much offense at all. The final score will probably be like 30 to 10, 31 to 10 yeah. or something like that. And we're still, you know, 10, 11 points away from where they think that that total is going to be. Um, if we get a game out of this, this thing will sail right over 51.5. But I don't think we're going to get a game out of this. I think the Niners are going to crush them, unfortunately. Uh, so that's why I'm taking the under. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty damn high, man. They're you know playing in San Fran, so I don't know if uh, the Lions can hit that super stride there under the pressure. The, the, this defensive line for the 49ers, they've not overwhelmed considering the talent they got across the board. But man, again, these guys are healthy. You know, Fred Warner and all of them, they're, they're beasts. So I know they have a little, a few holes in that secondary, but I got to agree, man. Um, and I think that Detroit would probably offer the biggest chunk of production if he was projecting it based off of what we've seen the last few weeks. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that under, man, that seems pretty high for me. Yep. Yeah, and and you're right. When it comes to the IDP props, this is the best matchup that our Niners options have had in a while. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, Detroit was the fifth overall rushing attack. I, I, you know, don't quote me on that, but that's what I remember. I could be wrong. Uh, It was a very good rushing attack for the majority of the season. Anyone that plays fantasy football and had David Montgomery or Gibbs knows that. Uh, that, So that that you know that's what we need for opposing IDP production for Warner, for Greenlaw. We need those rushing attempts for our floor right there. And not to mention the Lions also have a top 10 passing attack. Uh, mm. So an excellent offense and good opposing offense is what creates uh, tackles for our IDP yep. props. Yep. yep, no doubt. And I think it shows a lot on their money line here, you know, that they figure the 49ers are going to get that. So they're trying to prompt people to really – go after the Lions, which, you know, that'd be a Cinderella outcome. But I kind of yeah. guess, I, I'm going to take a guess you're going negative 340. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right. and you're right. You're right. That's, you know, anytime you, you need to figure out, you know, what does Vegas think? And, and in my head, when I'm saying Vegas, I mean, uh, you know, hundreds and thousands of experts making six figures a year, supercomputers and AI programs and an entire industry that is devoted just to screwing us so they can make money. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, <laughs> right, right. So, so, Set so off killed her just enough to bait you. Right, right. right. So, so if, if, if Vegas is saying you need to bet $340 to make a hundred, they're pretty mm-hmm. sure the Niners are going to win. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yep, that's quite lopsided. So that's a good one, man. That's a good it, one. It's, it's going to be some good games, though. I'm gonna, it's going to be an interesting weekend. Yeah, no doubt. And I'm 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 rooting for the Lions big time. Uh, I'll be yeah. watching the game. With I mean, me. that would be exciting enough to go ahead and go and put your ten bucks on that plus two seventy, right? Just so when it hits, you can go. Hey, look at me, Mama won. Yeah, oh, I've been doing that. I've been doing that. Uh, yeah. I, uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm ready if it, the Lions win. <laughs> it depends on what kind of investment you're looking at, right? Yeah. Nothing crazy, but yeah, just a right, little bit. Right. You got any uh, IDP props for this bad boy? Yeah. I'll talk about Joey Boza right now. Okay. So oh, uh, uh, to... Nick. 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 Oh, Nick yeah. Boza. I want to talk about Nick Boza real quick here. Um, he, they got him for, let's uh, see. I want to get him for over uh, three quarters of a sack. I believe it was actually uh, a plus sign. Am I mistaken? Give me one second. Uh, actually, it's over a three quarter of a sack at negative one thirty. Uh, 
I mean, he's an elite player. Player again. He's been in Ontario this year. He's the main guy. He's the best pass rusher left in the playoffs, next to Aiden Hudson and number two. But clearly, number two. Um, you know, the, the I believe that defensive line is fairly healthy. I think the only one that might be being banged up might be Armstead, but I think he's back to practice. So. Um, I mean, I'm even looking at Chase Young. I had him in the uh, plus bets only uh, first edition to get a sack because of, uh, well, he had a plus 165. And it's, I think there's going to be plenty to say that Nick and him both have a great opportunity, and we'll, especially Boza will get a sack when for the last two contests, uh, let's see, golf has been sacked five times. Like mm. two against Tampa Bay, three against uh, the Rams. No, I think it was two Rams, three Tampa Bay. He's accept, acceptable to it. I just mentioned a little bit earlier that the defense or the uh, offensive line is a little bit beat up, not necessarily the tackles, but they do have a little bit of a weakness going on there with a the guard out. So I have no problem thinking that uh, 49ers Nick Boza is going to get over a three quarter of a sack at minus 130 oh yeah um, i'm with you on this man this is the sack leader from the season before this one uh w- yep. what was it 19 and a half or something he had an insane wow. year a uh, little bit of a down year this year with like what was it 15 16 something like that that's insane mm-hmm. that's still that's still a sack of game basically uh, and, yep. and and yes, and they went is. right and they went out and got chase young and hargrave also uh for mm-hmm. this for for yeah. this weekend, for for this exact situation, to have enough pass rush to actually get to the Super Bowl and win it, so it's time for those guys to do their thing. Oh yeah, I mean it's time for the stars to rise, and you got Boza definitely. And I want to mention, I mean Chase Young really hadn't done much getting into the backfield when it comes you know, since he's joined the uh, the Forty ers But if you wanted to think about that, but in itself, I mean this dude is actually a free agent this off season looking to get paid. All right, he, he's been a kind of a well, I hate to say it, but kind of a bust overall. If you look at the first round draft pick status that he had, yeah. you know, and I think I used to talk about it, man, back with you maybe a little bit. I know I did on the Getting Defensive uh, podcast about how I was fading Chase Young just for the fact that I watched him in, in Ohio State, you know, and he always showed up for the big games like this. He shows up for the big games, but the other games, well, kind of, you know, not so much all the time. So he's kind of fell into that same kind of, uh, I guess you could say, prototype for his career, in my opinion, with his injuries. And then he just hasn't been able to get on track. I mean, he's I know he's playing the strong side for the 49ers, you know, so we, we would expect more. I think he's really going to turn it on here and get that too. I it, think he's going to get in the back forty. He, he needs to be noticed. Right. And I, I actually, to be honest with you, like that a little bit better than the Bosa one. The Bosa one feels safe, right? Like, yeah, like that's, right. that's, um, oh, I'm not going to say a guarantee, but it's the best chance you have, mm-hmm. you know, at a sack prop, probably uh, th- yes, this weekend. Yeah, exactly why, I do. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, when we were doing the first edition, we were looking at all those biggest pl- plus bets and you no know, negatives whatsoever. So you're exactly right. That's how I present this. this right, just, right. So, yeah, the, the, the Bosa one is safe. It's very likely to happen. I love the Chase Young bet, though, because what did you say, plus 160 or something? That's 165, that's like, yes, last woo, night. Yeah, right. that, that, that is a spectacular price, and it's it's this, it's this his opportunity. I, I think you're mm-hmm. right. I think he's going to step up because they're obviously going to be, you know, doubling and chipping and moving guys over to, um, you know, help out with Bosa. And they got to worry about Hargrave, too, with uh, that hole in the right. middle of their off- offensive line. That leaves yep. Chase Young on an island to, to just yep. show up and wreck, wreck havoc. Yep. He, he only needs to get in there once, and his name's all over national TV. Yep. Sweet, man. Yeah. It was a good one. I appreciate everybody has been checking us out this whole uh, uh, playoff run here. Johnny's been on a roll. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Rel- yeah, somewhat. It, we're still nah, plus. Come on, man. We're, we're... Just you went two and two last week. That's your first fifty-fifty of the whole freaking time. <laughs> the rest of the time, you're like 80 percent above normal or above par or whatever. So you, you're burning it up, brother. Let's close her out. <laughs> yes, sir.
Well, uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, good luck this week. I'm guessing we'll be back and we'll do the next two weeks in a row because there's a lot of Super Bowl bets, right? There's there's hundreds. Color of Gatorade, National Anthem, everything on down. So we'll go through a ton of them over the next two weeks, get you all set up for the Super Bowl. In the meantime, oh, yeah, good luck, everyone. Have a good week, and we'll catch you next week. Stay on, stay on. Sack on the ball. Thank you for watching this IDP guys video. If you like this content and you want more fantasy football content, click here. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos to help you master your IDP league, click here to subscribe.